As academic physicians, we live in a world of constant information, whether it be journal articles or teaching notes or clinical pearls or maybe administrative things. The problem is most of this information gets scattered across multiple platforms and is really hard to find. This is where Obsidian changes everything. With just plain text in simple markdown formatting, Obsidian allows us to be able to capture, create, organize, and store, and use all the notes that we take. In this video, we're gonna dive into Obsidian and talk specifically about the markdown formatting that you can use in Obsidian. My name is Matt, I'm an academic emergency physician, I'm a husband and a father, and this channel is all about life in emergency medicine. Several years ago, one of my friends introduced me to this application called Obsidian. It's a software system that allows you to create notes, to manage notes, to store notes, and really to connect notes to create this thing called an ideaverse. This concept of an ideaverse is a term that was coined by a guy named Nick Milo, who's one of my mentors in Obsidian. He talks about how we create basically this neural network in Obsidian of thoughts and ideas and content that we can link together. And this is really where the power of Obsidian comes, is it's not just a place to jot down a couple notes and throw them away, but it's really a way of connecting all these disparate ideas into a comprehensive system that we can then go back to, and then rather than losing all that information, be able to use it again. And as an academic physician, this becomes really, really important because one of the things that I've found is a huge killer of productivity is having to constantly reinvent the wheel. So I give a lecture on a topic a couple of years ago, and I'm going to give another similar lecture on a similar topic, but didn't save all my information, right? And so I have to go back and reinvent all that data that I came up with the first time. And so if I can have a way of taking and capturing these notes and storing the notes and then connecting them to other ideas, I can then develop a neural network of ideas that can then foster and develop and really accelerate some output when it comes to the academic side of my work. Today, I wanna to talk specifically about how to start with Obsidian, the markdown language in Obsidian. One of the beauties of Obsidian is that it's extremely personal to you. It's a lightweight format that you can really mold and shape and develop into what you want it to be. And really it can get out of the way so that you can focus in on what you're working on as opposed to trying to mold what you're working on into the system that you've created for it. And to do that, it allows you to be able to store notes locally if you choose, and it stores notes in basically a text format. But as all of us know, we don't really wanna just read raw text format. We wanna be able to read it in some formatted way so that we can understand what's heading, what's you know not heading, what's bold, what's text, what's quotes, etc. And so to do that, we overlay this markdown formatting. Now, the nice thing about Obsidian is that a lot of it is easily accessible through the front end in the, in the banners. You can just drop down and say, I want it to be this format. But to really speed things up, if we learn the language, right, the markdown language of Obsidian, we can then add that in real time as we're typing our text in. So with that said, that's what we're going to work on today. We're going to talk about the markdown language to get you started with Obsidian. So let's dive on into the vault that I have here. All right, so here's our vault. Basically, this is my vault. I have you know, some organization on the left-hand side. We can talk about that another time but we're ready to create a new note in Obsidian. So we're gonna hit Command N, get us into a new note, and this is going to be Markdown Example. All right, so we're gonna, the, the first thing we just put in is the, the title, right? This is gonna be the title of the note, and whatever you title this note is what it's gonna be stored as somewhere else. So it's gonna be that title dot MD, wherever you stored your vault. So we can get into our, our note. And this is essentially just a text file. So we can start, you know, we can start writing text. It's that simple. You start writing your notes. We, we can write more text, right? So the, the basic default format is just writing text in Obsidian. You can start new paragraph. and keep writing the text that you want. So as we think about Markdown, as we think about this formatting, there's several broad headings that we want to really discuss today. And that's gonna be just the text Markdown, text writing uh, format, text writing formatting. Then we wanna talk about how to create lists. Then we wanna talk about headers. And finally, we wanna talk about the best part of Obsidian, and that is uh, the linking how to do that. So that's going to be the, the outline that we're going to follow today. So text writing format, basically, how, this is, is basic block text. 
You can just write your text. That being said, sometimes you want to see something as a bold or an italic. So to do that, we use the asterisk, right? So if you do two asterisks, then type your text. That gives us our bold, right? To make it italic, it's just one asterisk on either side of the words that are italic, right? So if you noticed, I have basically the text with an asterisk on either side. So if we copy in just some basic paragraphs, so here's a quote that I really like from C.S. Lewis. We have just the, the paragraph formatting, but if I want to start adding bold to certain letters, I can highlight that and then actually go to the beginning, type in the two asterisks and two asterisks at the end to, to make those characters bold. Now, we have a couple other formatting options. If we wanna highlight a particular text, that's two equal signs, and then your text, followed by two equal signs. So you're seeing the pattern, a symbol that opens and closes you know, a, a bracket around text. So here's another example. This is an important part in this text that I really like, so you can come here, type to it, two, equal signs, and at the end, you can type, you can close it out to two more equal signs. And that gives us our highlighted text. Now finally, if there's something you don't like, there's the strike through option, and so you can go two of the squiggly lines and close out with two squiggly lines. So the basic formatting here with text is you start and you end the text with the the symbol that you want. There's one other broad form of text highlighting that may be helpful, and that is a quote. If you want to separate something off as a quote, then we use the little hash mark like this. And so you can either use the hash mark and start typing your quote here, or you can insert it at the beginning of a paragraph, a block of text, and it will make that entire block a quote. The next thing we want to do is, well, what if you want to create a list, right? We have a, a header, we want to do a number of different things under that list. So the second thing we want to talk about is lists. And you have three different options of lists that you can do in Obsidian. You can do a bullet list, you can do a numbered list, and you can do a to-do list. So the bullet list is simply as what it says. It is just creating bullets. So you can do bullet one, or item one, item two, etc. And to get this, you basically use the hyphen key, right? And then a space, and then start typing your item in your bullet list, right? Now, to get a numbered list, we do simply the number, period, and space. So we can go number one, number one, period, space, item one, and then item two, item three. And finally, to get the to-do list, it's basically this really cool checkbox. And so the way, way we get into that one is basically the hyphen key, followed by a space, and then open, space, close bracket, and then space. And that's gonna get us into item one, item two, and item three. Finally, we wanna get into the headers. And this is where we can really start distinguishing blocks of text. So if we wanna have this big category and then some text underneath it, we wanna have different header levels where we can organize our note in Obsidian, right? So we can do um, you know, different, various different levels of headers. So header one, header two, header three, header four, and it goes on down the list. To get a header in the formatting, we basically use the hashtag mark followed by a space. So if you do hashtag space, that formats it into heading one, right? And then you can, underneath that, you can type in, this is my text for heading one, right? Underneath all that. If you want a secondary header, you can do header two, so it's gonna be two hashtags followed by a space. Header three is gonna be three hashtags followed by a space, and so on and so forth. And so if we get to header four, 
did header five there, but we can do header four, four hashtags in a space. And then they have even have header five. Oops. We gotta add in a four there. Header five, you can do five hashtags in a space, and that gets us header five. So these are different ways that we can then organize our text. So if we come back to our master list here, maybe I want to have my uh, text writing formatting be a header one. So I can do he header one there. Text list formatting here could be header another header one. Thirdly, we want to have the header formatting. It's another header one. And then what we're going to talk about next is the linking. So that's another header one. And then if we want to come underneath this, we can say, okay, maybe we want to show our bulleted list as a header two, right? Numbered list is a header two. To-do list is a header two, right? So we can different, we can start organizing our note uh, underneath different headings and different formatting so we can easily see that inside our note. And what you'll notice if you come over to the properties tab on the right hand side here is that the note will then start organizing itself underneath these headers. So you can expand and contract some of these headers. And now you're starting to give your note a little bit of organization that Obsidian is going to start recognizing. Okay, and this will become important as we go into this linking section next. All right, and then under the final heading, we want to talk about linking formatting. So this is the, really the powerful part of Obsidian. So in other software systems, right, you can create notes, you can put the notes somewhere else, and maybe you can search through those notes, but you may have forgotten that you've written that note. And then when it comes time to actually doing something, maybe down the line on a similar topic, it's if you've forgotten about that note, it's hard to pull back up. But in Obsidian, the beautiful thing that you can do here is you can actually create a link to that note that when you are starting to pull that thread later on, it's going to link you back down that chain. You can find this note again. And so this is really easy in Obsidian, and it simply is done by using your double square bracket. And so as you're typing along a note, if you want to link to a note or link to a thought or link to a certain word, just hit that double square bracket and we can get the link going. So if you know you have a note, so like I use, I do ultrasound a lot. So I can type in ultrasound, right? Highlight that double square bracket, and it's going to link to that ultrasound note that I have, where I can go then pull it up and see what I've written about about ultrasound. Right? If you're typing a block of text, let's get our our C.S. Lewis block of text back in here and see if there is some other word that maybe I've potentially linked to in the past. I can say, hmm. Well, let's see. Politics. Maybe I've linked to that. That seems to be like a keyword. You can hit that link button. Worship, maybe I've linked to that. Um, and then, so I've created a note on C.S. Lewis. So I can go C.S. Lewis, there we go. Boom, now I have the link to C.S. Lewis there. So that's the easy way to do this, right? Just the double bracket, where you can either highlight the text, hit double bracket, or hit double bracket. And then it's gonna pull up a list of the um, notes that you already have that you know may help prompt finding that link. But what if I wanna use a different word? So for example, how sonography has changed over the years, right? And I want to link it to this idea of ultrasound. Um, I can type in, you know, ultrasound. I can type in ultrasound here, but then it has this random word that I don't want in my text. So what I can do is I can create a, basically a false name or an alter alternate name for the word ultrasound instead of linking it to this particular note. And so the way you do that is basically you create your link and then you use your pipe, right? And then whatever word I want. So in this case, I want sonography. And then when we go back to our text, we can see that it's replaced the word sonography, uh, it has replaced the word ultrasound with sonography. And as we click that word, it gets us back to that ultrasound link that we were looking at before. So let's say we want to create a link to a particular part of a note as opposed to the whole thing, right? A particular header or block of text inside that note. So we can do that um, by doing this. So let's say we come down here, create our ultrasound note, right? So this one just creates the note. But if we come back here and use the uptick, 
then it gives us a couple different options. And we can see in here all the different options that it's gonna give us. So we can create a note to some of the navigation. We can create two different headers here. So let's say this one I wanna hit do to the, the header POCUS exams, right? It's gonna insert that. And then we can have this basically be a link to that header inside that note. And again, if we want to rename this thing so it looks a little bit nicer in our note, we can say POCUS exams. And now when we come back here, we can see POCUS exams, and it takes us to that section inside this note. Now this isn't limited only to headers, you can do it to various different blocks of text inside that note. And so here for another example, I'm gonna go back to this ultrasound, and then the uptick, we can see not only is it the headers, but there's also text here. So here's a, a, a line from one of my former residents, a chance to scan is a chance to know. We can click that, again, it's gonna insert that uh, indicator here in the header, and then we go here and it links us to that, that block of text, the chance, the chance to scan is a chance to know. So I hope this helps as you get yourself started with Obsidian. You know, what I've found is the more that I can do in Markdown in real time as I'm taking notes, the more the program gets out of my way. And I can focus on the data, the information that I'm putting in there, not fighting with the system to make it what I want it to be. And so this is where I think the power of Obsidian is, is it just gets out of your way. It allows you to link your thoughts. Now there's a lot more information that you can use uh, to create more formatting in Markdown, but I think these are the basics that are really gonna help you get started. If you want a downloadable Markdown guide, I have one over on my website, excellentphysician.com slash obsidian, and there is a link that will allow you to download uh, a Markdown guide that gets you started with some of these different formats. If you wanna see the reasons why you as an academic physician should get into Obsidian, check out the video in this card here, and have a great day. Thanks for watching, guys, bye.